plains and mountains of central Argentina, a wild, untouched region of stunning natural beauty. But for three days in April, this rugged terrain becomes the playground of the world's best rally drivers. The result is nothing less than spectacular. This is the third and final day of the Phillips Rally Argentina. It's been quite an event so far, so let's get you right up to date. Amazingly, the early drama on this new endurance event even hit six times Argentina winner Sebastian Loeb, who had a morning to forget on the opening day. And it was Perez Solberg who led early on, holding a 20-second lead until his steering broke on stage four and he was forced to retire. Wait for Perez's 14th WRC win goes on. Citroen's Miko Harvin then briefly took the lead, but he wouldn't stay there for long because his teammate Sebastian Loeb had fought back on the opening afternoon, and it was the Frenchman who was out front at the end of day one. Latia started the second day in fifth place, but a misjudged corner in stage nine ended his hopes of another fine result in the DS3. And despite valiant efforts to repair the car, car in the road section, Nasser, his day ended before he got back to service. And Nasser's nightmare elevated Martin Prokop up into the top five, the only runner on DMAC tyres continuing to find his feet on his debut season at the sport's top level. Portugal's winner Mads Osberg, meanwhile, had fought his way up to fourth place despite a close call at a narrow bridge in stage nine. With no pressure on his position, the Norwegian was free to relish these stunning Argentinian roads. Fantastic stage, uh, just having so much fun now. Uh. Well, Danny Sordo had taken over the fight for Ford's podium honours following Solborg's mishap, but after destroying his soft tyres on in the opening stage of day two, he was never able to recover the ground lost to the Citroëns. And up front, Hervenham was giving his all to catch his teammate. The battle between the Citroën stars was building into a classic. And Loeb had begun to lose some ground over the morning loop. The Frenchman with a massive scare on stage nine. I had a big moment. Went off the. I don't know how I could stay on the road. And with a 1 2 finish at stake, Loeb's close call seemed to spur the team into action. The gap between us and the third driver is uh, 1 minute 30. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are in position in the junction where we need the points. Well, so the decision had been made, and Miko Hervnen forced to back off, off over the afternoon loop. And with that, Sebastian Loeb maintained his lead at the front on course for an incredible seventh Argentina win. We lost a lot of points in Portugal and uh, we have a good opportunity now to score some good points for both championships.
Well, going into the final overnight break, Loeb's advantage stood at just 7.2 seconds from Havenham, with Sordo more than a minute and a half adrift of the Citroens in third. Mads Osberg and Martin Prokop round off the top five positions. Well, none of those positions are secure just yet, however, because the first stage of day three is the longest of the entire championship at an epic 66 kilometers. This final leg travels up into the rugged Transilaria Mountains, including the classic El Condor and Julio Cesar stages. 132 kilometers still to come on this crucial third day. As we've already seen this weekend, anything could still happen in Argentina. Once again, the finish positions from day two are reversed to decide the start list for the final leg. Estonia's Oit Tanak first into the stages, followed by Brazilian drivers Paulo Nobre and Daniel Oliveira. And the leaders of the final WRC cars into action with Miko Hervnen and Sebastian Loeb with a much clearer line in theory, should there be any road sweeping, should be the best place to be. Well, into stage 14 then, quite a challenge ahead the cruise 66 kilometers Jules you drove through that stage this morning tell us a little bit about it yeah well, I mean the first well the first two-thirds of the stage is incredibly fast really wide fast and flowing but interestingly the first 11 or 12 k's were really slippy and damp and muddy well Peter Solberg with the job to do after that problem he had in day one desperate to make his way up the leaderboard blasting off into the stage he's got a big push today well that's it it's 66 kilometers of blistering quick Argentinian gravel and just look at how straight it is here it's a big opportunity this is for Petter to claw some time back and try and make some positions up really quite different this stage to anything we've seen already in the rally yeah it's just incredibly quick the, the two-thirds of it is massively fast Petter obviously first stage on Sunday morning the long stage it was a stage potentially where huge time could be made and if there was a little few problems for anybody else positions as well how did it go for you it uh, it went okay for a while but then where it was foggy, you know, because it's so fast, I, my pace was, was not good from there, there to the finish, you know, it was really not good. Well, Peter, obviously on a bit of a mission today, Jules, and hunting down this man, Thierry Neuville. Well, that's it, like the Norwegian, Neuville is doing rallies two rules after his accident on Friday. And he's determined to stay ahead of Petter. Petter's determined to get past him. It's a big push by Neuville. Neuville on the hard tyre, Petter on the soft. Important Neville keeps things on the road today. Just up ahead in front of him, fifth place, Martin Prokop, doing a good job out there on the D-Max. Well, that's it. It's his debut season in the World Rally car, and Martin doing a great job. And over six minutes ahead of Prokop in fourth place, Mad Zosberg. Another hugely solid weekend so far from him, but he knows today is a long, long day. 132 Ks for Mads and all our other drivers out there. Well, that's it, but... Uh, Osberg perfectly placed in case anyone slips up in the top three. And obviously leading that top three is Sebastian Loeb at the moment going into the final day. Heading towards potentially win number seven. You'd have to say, Jules, the way things are looking, Loeb the favourite this morning to hold on to that lead. Well, he's got no pressure apart from himself and any mistakes. And he rarely makes mistakes. He does rarely make mistakes. But here's a man who's made no mistakes so far this weekend, Danny Sordo, having a really good event. If he can finish in third place, that's a great result for him and for Ford. It'd be a perfect result, exactly what they want out of him. That's why he was hired, and uh, he's just so consistent, is, is Sordo. Ahead of Sordo, Miko Harvin, and well, a little frustrated at having a hold position, but doing a great job, showing his pace so far. Well, that's it. He starts the day 7.2 behind Loeb. It's a big push for Miko to keep the concentration more than challenging, trying to challenge Loeb anyway. That's it. Just look at this. He's now climbing up the hill. There's people. The landscape is just amazing out there. Quite a low sun there. Would that have affected the drivers this morning? It was the earliest start. The sun out for the first time this weekend. Yeah, for the sun was out. It was nice, I have to say. Still looks a bit damp in that stage. That surface to me, there's certainly not much dust being thrown up there. Quite a, a damp surface, a bit of dew overnight, maybe even a bit of rain, some standing water there, Jules. Well, at the finish line when we arrived, it was just a plus, just above plus three degrees. Uh, there was frost on the roofs of the car that was at the uh, finish line. So uh, that is damp. 
and uh, Oik Tanak actually thinking that he was a bit icy at the start of the stage. I, I thought it was mud, but he thought it was ice. Well, you can get that at this time of year in Argentina. We've seen snow in the past, uh, all sorts of weather this weekend, as you can see from these great shots, beautiful blue skies above the stages today. Make our longest stage of the event, and uh, it's all been quite calm compared to the long ones we had in Mexico and things like that. But how did you see it from your car? It was okay, it's a nice day, but you know, I think I went faster in the recce than I did now. <laughs> Steady pace. Well, Hervnan perhaps just toying with his world champion teammate out there in the epic Matadero stage. Really is quite some addition to Rally Argentina route in 2012. Loeb, the last WRC runner to come through this incredible stretch of road then, and he's reacting to Miko's cheeky charge in the final few kilometers. The rally leader completes the stage just 1.2 seconds slower. 65.74 k's, and I think 1.2 seconds between the two of you at the end of that one. Yeah, we took it really easy. Uh, we had a soft tire choice, but really old soft tire choice. So um, we were not so confident in the start of the stage that if we push a little bit, we we come to the end. So and we have three stages to go. So I really were, was taking care of the tire, not. Not no slide, avoiding the tie, the stones, and uh, we are here. So that's that's not bad. It was a, a long way. Well, the intriguing shadow boxing continues up at the front. Then further back, Sebastian Ogier starts the final morning just five seconds ahead of his teammate Andreas Mikkelsen. The Norwegian impresses again in stage 14, making up 3.2 seconds on his teammates. Well, with both Skoda drivers slipping behind Neuville, it's now seventh place they're fighting for. But the gap between them just now 1.8 seconds. Solberg won that beast of a stage, but it's still almost two minutes adrift of eighth place. Loeb's lead trimmed to six seconds. Well, they've survived the epic Matadero. Coming up next are some of the most iconic stages in the WRC. The stunning Mina Clavero and El Condor. Welcome back to the WRC powered by Nokia. It's off to two of Rally Argentina's classic stages next. The climb up Mina Clavero is instantly recognizable. These are some of the classic images of this famous old event. Well, into stage 15 and 16 then. Well, it's the start of stage 15. And on the start line, Julian, Danny Sordo. He's not got far to go. And uh, so far, so good for Sordo. That's it. It's been a strong weekend. But these are the highest altitude stages on the rally, as well as being potentially the roughest. The rocks just seem to be sticking out all over the place. We have seen in the past, in previous years, the Ford struggling with altitude, but not this year, not in Mexico, not here. No, no, they spent a lot of time and a lot of effort uh, in the engine tuning bay. And what a difference it has made. Yeah, Peter Solberg very confident that his car is a winner. Danny Sordo showing his pace this weekend. Sordo's former teammate, Jules Sebastian Loeb, you know, Team, in, team orders introduced yesterday, making it a little easier for Sebastian Loeb, but hasn't been an easy rally so far for him. He made those mistakes on day one, and he really has been pushed. That's it, he has been pushed. Look at the scenery. He's obviously not going to see much of this as he's blasting his way through, but it's stunning scenery as he r closes up to 2,000 metres and is he towards the end of this stage. There's nothing else like this in the world of rallying. You know when you see these pictures, this is Rally Argentina. Well, that's it, it's iconic. The last section, very, very narrow between Ooh. the rocks. Well, we've seen cars coming through that iconic section in the snow before, thank goodness. None of that this weekend. No, it'll have been a bit chilly with it. The weather's just massively different today. Just the neatness of Loeb is just incredible. You need to be through those stages. One, really, you know, a few feet off of the line and you're in real trouble. But Miko Harvenen still keeping things interesting this morning. Pushing hard at times. It's a bit odd what's going on there. What is going on there, Jules? I think he's just kind of like, yeah, I am still here. The fastest in stage 15, or faster than Loeb anyway in stage 15. And uh, he's trimmed that lead down to just two tenths of a second again. He's kind of just a little pointer of, yeah, 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 yeah. I I'm only behind you because I was told to be. 
I think there's a bit of that and there's a bit of the fact that they've got to keep these cars on the pace to see them operating at the best. I think the drivers always say, and we keep saying it, they always say that you lose concentration when you're not pushing hard. Nico Harvin is certainly pushing hard, but he won't want to push too hard, doesn't want to get in front of his teammate. Now, this really has been the battle all weekend. Andreas Mikkelsen and Sebastian Ogier in the Skoda Fabias. Just the most incredible fight between these two. They have been pushing something rotten. It's been a brilliant performance by them. Ogier here, and I tell you what, he's absolutely been on it. It's just massively spectacular to watch these two this weekend. Ogier loves this rally. He should have won it last year, made a mistake on the final day, rolled his DS3. But I tell you what, I've been impressed by young Mickelson. His first time here winning stages against Ogier and battling hard all weekend. But that happened. Julian, you were there. What was that all about? Well, it's quite obvious to see what happened there. Well, that was it. He just basically hit a rock and it pushed the suspension through out of its socket and it was out. That car wasn't going anywhere. There we go. That was Andreas Mikkelsen. Sebastian Loeb then leads his lead over Mikko Harvin in 1.3 seconds. Danny Sordo still in third place. Mads Osberg in fourth. Martin Prokop in fifth. back at service then and questions still being raised about Harvinen's pace despite the team orders. Quite, quite steady. Uh, no panic really, we managed to keep our position pretty well so uh, no problem. Nothing going on between you and Sebastian because you're still close to him? No, no, I mean uh, like in a long stage I was seven seconds or something ahead of him and then I just slowed down in the end and we were almost equal and uh, I don't know how in uh, uh, I mean, like other states, I was so much faster. Maybe because our tyres were a little bit different, so it was just a lot easier for me, but, uh, but no, there's no, no problems. Tyre shows, which was a bit special with uh, some worn tyres uh, for the three stages, too. So it was important not to take big risk and uh, not to destroy the tyres, so we were driving very smoothly, and uh, but okay, no, no problem at all. Uh, we've done three correct stages, no problem. Well, it's back up the mountain then for stage 17, the second running of the Mino Clavero Julio Cesar stage. A lot of cars through this stage this morning. Jules, are, well, a sandy surface could be quite rough out there in the second pass. It will be rough and it will be rutted. And uh, tell you what, those stages didn't take long to claim their first victim of the afternoon. Armando Arujo struggling through the stage. And he ended up having to park it up. It's not what he needs, a broken steering arm ending his result in Argentina. He'd such a disappointment. Well, such a huge disappointment because he had such a good event up to then. On the start line, Solberg still with a job to do, still trying to retrieve that situation after the first day's problems. Well, that's it. I mean, Petr, it's, it's, all, it's not all or nothing, but look at yeah, You can see the ruts, you can see the rocks, but this is an all or nothing attack from Petr up the mountain. Just look at those fans as well. It's just incredible. Oh, on the inside, there are fans along every metre of this stage. An enormous number of spectators out in the stages. That's it, and Petter's been quickest on every stage so far today. Well, he could easily have been fighting for the lead here, Jules, but this is the man that's leading. It is Sebastian Loeb. He has to be careful through these remaining three stages of the rally because you can see from the onboard there the car bouncing about on that really tough, rocky surface. That's it, and stage 18 cleared now for the world champion. Just one to go for him. He's way up to the top of the mountain. Not quite one to go for him yet, Jules. He's got to get through this one yet. Well, just the end of this, this is those tight bits we were talking about earlier on. As you say, the fans standing up on the rocks, and it's just one of the most amazing views from up there. It is now just one to go when he comes through those red wards. Well, with Hervenden backing off a lot through this second pass, Loeb's lead stands at 15.8 seconds with Danny Sordo still comfortable in third. And confirmation there that Solberg's upward momentum has continued by passing Ogier for seventh place. Well, it's on to stage 19. It's the power stage, the Amarok Copina stage. This is the bottom part, Jules, of the famous El Condor stage. I said it. They've they've done the, they've done it once before, so they've got a little bit of experience, a little bit of pace note tweaking first time round. So let's see what's going to happen. 
Oh, that's, that's Danny Sordo. That's been, Danny Sordo having had such an excellent weekend being pushed. What was, was the problem? Basically pushed off the start line there. In the end, it was alternator failure and a uh, frustrated Danny Sordo slamming the door. Well, he's done such a great job, brought in at the last minute to replace the injured Yari Matty. Great job this weekend, but there we go. End of the day, no I'll points for Sordo. But he had no power on the power stage. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, we just uh, the battery of the car was gone just before the stage, and uh, at the end of the uh, of the stage before was some some alarms of the uh, not not battery. And after we start the the last stage, the last the power stage, four kilometers, and we do we do less than one kilometer, and the car stops. So I'm really disappointed, but it's, it's the rally. So Solberg not, well sorry, Sordo Jules not contesting the power stage, but Perez Solberg, he was on it in the power stage, needed to pick up as many points as he could, and he did. He blasted through the stage to pick up those three points. Well, that was it. It, it, it was, he had to try and take them with having the problems and being so far down the order. He needed to get as many points as possible. Maybe helped slightly by the others not pushing mega, mega hard, but he had to. Look at the speed here. It's the fastest part. They're really on the limit of those last two or three Ks. Here we go, Petter Solberg winning the power stage. What can you take out of this weekend, though? The speed since you went off, the speed before, well, not went off, but the steering broke. Hey, the car is fast. I'm fast. It's just, you know, even we took it careful on first day, and what happened, he's just so unlucky when you were middle of the road, braking, hit the sump car, and I bent the steering, so. And then it broke after 10 Ks. So, what can I say? Very disappointed, as same as the whole team is, you know, but very good for Sordo. Fantastic drive, and he did his job properly, so it's very, very good. Well, it did look good for Danny Sordo. As we saw, he retired at the start of that stage. Solberg took three points, Hervlin was second for two, and Nasser Alatia picked up his first point in the par stage. But this is Benito Guerra. This is the production World Rally Championship, and he wins here in Argentina. Yes! Benito, the smile is massive. It's another victory in Pedro Arce, this time in Argentina. Yeah, my first victory out of Mexico. It's amazing. Second victory in a row. This year is starting so good for me and so good for Rally Art Italy. I'm very happy and very thankful with all my team, all my sponsors. Everything worked perfect in this uh, very tough Rally Argentina. Yeah, two production World Championship wins in a row for Benito Guerra, but in the overall standings, Loeb's margin of victory of his teammate Hervenham was 15.2 seconds after 500 brutal kilometers. Mads Osberg collects a surprise podium, a finishing weekend. following Tolberg's... Yeah, no, it was a difficult weekend, but for sure, I, I'm very happy uh, because it was a, a really long rally. Uh, we, we've done a really good race with, uh, with Mikko for, for the team, first and second, and... Uh, so for the championship, uh, the both championship, it's it's really good and uh, seven victory in a row here in, in Argentina is is incredible. So I'm really happy for that. If I guess you're a happy man with with uh, with a double one two good points for the championship, but after team orders. Yes, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's like that. We have to do it. Uh, now it seems easy at the end of the weekend, but uh, before the weekend on a so long rally and so rough, not so easy when you have a. A gap like that of uh, one and a half day, I think it's the only solution. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people say that, that Miko is the moral winner here. Yes, maybe. I hope we, we, we can do something for him in the future in this way. And uh, after Portugal, it's a little bit difficult for him. But he is happy, and both in the team are very happy to, to, to be together. And they know what, what uh, is the aim uh, on the team end of the year, and they work in this way. Well, this is what Loeb's win means for the championship standings. The Frenchman now holds a lead of 18 points over Perez Solberg, with Hervenen overhauling Osberg to move up to third in the title race. Yari Mati Latvala has a mountain to climb when he returns from injury. And what a difference a 1-2 finish makes, particularly when your rivals have a bad day at the office. Citroen pulling out an advantage of 45 points over Ford in the Manufacturers' Championship. Well, Loeb and Daniel Elena have become well accustomed to standing on the top step of the podium in Argentina. Seven wins in a row is quite some record on such a challenging event. Next up, they head back to Europe for another car breaker. Greece's Acropolis rally is coming up in just under a month.
Well, that's all from us here after a breathless three days in South America. Loeb is back on top. Join us again in Greece to see if his rivals can respond. But for now, from Carlos Paz, it's goodbye.